clowns. Love them or hate them, we're making one today. Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here and welcome to another video. This one is particularly special because so many of you went on this clown journey with me. A few days ago, I asked you to submit your clown artwork to me and I will be displaying all of it at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that, you don't wanna miss it. Now this is the part where I would show you my clown collection but then I remembered I don't have one. Anyway, with all that said, let's make a clown. All right, armature time. I used 12 gauge aluminum wire to shape out the general shape of his body and then I'm just putting it all together with some masking tape and then bulking out the other parts of his body with aluminum foil. And as always, all the materials used in this video are listed in the description box below along with my affiliate links if you want to purchase anything. Now once I have his body roughed out, it's time to start covering the entire thing in Super Sculpey. To get these nice even sheets of clay, I just ran it through my pasta maker on the thickest setting. Now I'm just blending everything together and smoothing it all out and getting it ready for some details. Now once I have the body at a good spot, it's time to add the shoes. I'm just shaping those out with some aluminum foil here, pressing them into the clay and then covering them with Super Sculpey as well. And I'm just working those until they're nice and smooth. All right, so now I gotta ask you, do you like clowns? Do you hate them? Let me know in the comments. I feel like I know more people that hate them than like them. I personally really don't care. They don't bother me. I actually used to like them a lot when I was really little and the first picture I ever drew when I was like one was a clown. I'll have to dig it up and show you one day. All right, now that the shoes are done, it's time to create the pants. And to do this, I'm just adding a snake of clay to the bottom there and then blending the top edge in with the rest of his leg and I'm going in with some more snakes of clay to create some folds and wrinkles in the pants. Now I've mentioned this before in a previous video but just want to say it again. When sculpting fabric you can't just randomly throw folds everywhere and expect it to look right. You do have to be mindful of how the fabric would actually fall or else it's not going to make sense. So. If you're new to doing this and you're not sure what to do, I would actually suggest just grabbing a sheet or a blanket and draping it over a chair and then using that for reference and just kind of put your own spin on it. You don't have to sculpt exactly what you're looking at, but it will show you how gravity is working with that piece of fabric. That's looking pretty good. Now it's time to, what am I doing? Oh, I'm adding ruffles to the bottom of the pants. So to make these, I just rolled a piece of clay through my pasta maker on the four setting, I believe. And I am just cutting it to size and then folding it back and forth to create the ruffles. Once I have the entire piece folded, I pinch the top edge and then add it to the bottom of the pants. And then I added some bacon bond there to reinforce that connection. This method for the ruffles was actually really fun and effective. They looked really good without having to put a ton of work into them, and I love it when that happens. But they may have been easy to make, but they weren't easy to paint. Actually, if I had to make this guy all over again, I probably would make these using colored clay. Now I'm just adding some additional details to the bottom of the pants, making them look like they're kind of bunched up against the ruffles, and I'm using my taper tip color shaper. Now once the pants are looking pretty good, it's time to create the bottom of his shirt. And to do this, I'm doing it the same way as I did with the pants, just snake of clay, adding that to the bottom of his torso, and then blending the top edge in with everything else. Now for the front of his shirt, I want it to look like the two sides are sort of stretching around his chest like it's a little too small for him and the buttons are pulling, so I created this jagged edge right here. Let's see what a pom-pom looks like on it. Wow, okay, dig it up. Next, it's time to create the wrinkles in the front. Again, to make it look like they're pulling, I'm having them stretch outward from where the buttons or pom-poms will be. And this turned out pretty cool. I was happy with it. Now here I'm trying to figure out how to end the shirt, so I'm just cutting out a chunk at the bottom for attempt number one, and I really don't like how that looks, so we're just gonna fill it back in and do it this way. 
There we go, that looks better. And now it's time to repeat this process on the other side. Now once the details on the front of the shirt are at a good point, I am going to add some ruffles to the bottom of it. I just added a line of bacon bond there to attach the ruffles and I'm just folding those out and adding them. Once all the ruffles are added and that's looking pretty good, it's time to add the pom-pom buttons. Added a little bit of bacon bond there and I'm just adding some balls of clay. And the reason I'm putting them on and removing them so many times is because I'm trying to get them to all be the same size. Now it's time to texture the pom-poms. I'm using this tool here for attempt number one and then I don't really like how that's looking so I'm using this nice crumpled up piece of aluminum foil and I really like the texture that this gives. Makes them look more fuzzy. Well, this definitely looks like a clown now. <laughs> now I'm just cleaning up some excess bacon bond with a paintbrush really quick and then adding some additional details with my Dental Explorer tool to all of the ruffles. This gives them another level of detail and dimension. Now I'm just going over the surface with the textured edge of my sculpting tool, like so to create a nice fabric look. Then to make the outfit look a little worn down, I am just pinching and tearing the edges of the ruffles a bit and finishing them off, adding some clay softener to remove fingerprints, and then he's ready for his first bake. Once he's baked and cooled down, I decided I want him to be holding a balloon on a string, so I'm just attaching this thinner wire to the arm with some floral wire. If I wasn't deciding things on the spot here, I probably would have just made the balloon string part of the arm wire to begin with, but what you gonna do? Made it work. Then after bulking out the arms with some aluminum foil, I'm covering them with clay, and then I'm going to go in and add some more folds and wrinkles, just like I did with the rest of his outfit. All right, we're getting somewhere. Now it's time to add those folds and wrinkles here. Now it's time for my favorite part, the hands. Just kidding, I hate making hands, but you gotta do it. So here I am making the hand. <laughs> I left the entire clip in so you guys can see how I do it. Attaching the hand holding the balloon string was a little tricky because I had to hide that mess of wire underneath it. Had I made the string and arm from one piece of wire, this would have been much easier. Now I'm just adding a couple details to the gloves here and adding some ruffles to the end of the sleeve. And then I just added a quick little lip of fabric there to finish it off. Now it's time to make the other hand, attach that, add some ruffles to it, and he's looking pretty good. Now I'm attaching the collar ruffles after adding some bacon bond. These were a lot of fun to do just because they looked really good and I was really happy with how they turned out. And I add a couple layers of those. In the end he has three but I don't add the third one until his head is attached. And this part is pointless because I end up covering it up. All right, he's looking good. Time to start the head. I'm using Sculpey Firm for this just because it's not as soft as regular Super Sculpey and I like using it for smaller parts. The gray color of it also makes it easier to see details. Now after shaping out the eye area a bit with my fingers and adding the eye sockets, I'm putting on his nose. I really had no idea how I wanted him to look at this point. I'm seriously just making it up as I go. I know that I wanted him to have a very round head and a sort of toy aesthetic to him, so I'm just sort of taking that concept and running with it. 
All right, now I'm gonna give him a very wide smile. So I added some wide smile lines there and then I attached his nose and I'm just detailing everything out here, jumping between my spoon tool and color shapers and ball styluses here. Now we're trying to figure the eyes out. Now I'm trying to see if I like him better with upper eyelids or lower eyelids or maybe even both. I decided on the lower eyelids just to kind of go with that huge grin that he's got. Now I'm adding an angry brow like so, just adding these two teardrop shapes and blending them in with my um, firm detail tools and spoon tool like so. And then I extend them a little bit at the edges with another piece of clay. It looks like something, yay. Now we're just finishing off that other eye area here using my ball stylus. Now we're gonna give him some cheeks. Now once the cheeks are done, I decided that I want him to just have a large bottom lip. So I'm just adding that here like that, blending in the edge, and then adding a little Cupid's bow, detailing some things with my Explorer tool, color shaper, and then I want to make his bottom lip a little bit bigger, so I'm just adding another piece of clay and blending that in as well. And because I want this to be a creepy clown, as if he's not creepy enough already, I'm just giving him some nice little pointy teeth sticking up from that lip there. And I really like how these looked. There we go. All right, now it's time to add some final details to his face using my Dental Explorer tool to create some forehead wrinkles and crow's feet. Now I'm just adding his ears. This is just a flattened ball of clay, attaching it with my medium ball stylus and detailing it with my small ball stylus. After nitpicking things a little bit, it's time to brush the surface with clay softener to remove fingerprints and he's ready to bake. I always pre-bake my heads before I add the hair. Once the head is hardened and completely cooled down, let's make his hair. This is attempt number one. Not sure what I was going for here, but we have this sort of droopy cone shape. Then I try adding two other pieces next to it and seeing if that looks right. Nope. Attempt number two. No. Attempt number three. I don't know what this was supposed to be, some sort of corkscrew thing going on here and nope but I did use this one for the base on the final hair and after smoothing the surface down again I am just adding some curl texture with my firm detail tool and I really like how this one turned out and as I was doing this I decided to name him pretzel this is pretzel the clown everyone <laughs> Now I'm attaching his head after adding a little bit of bacon bond, adding some bacon bond to his neck to give him a little turtleneck, and a third layer of neck ruffles. Now it's time to make the balloon. I will be using Sculpey Ultralight for the first time ever. This stuff is so cool because it really is ultra light and that's exactly why I'm using it so that the balloon doesn't droop. The best way I can describe it is that it has the weight of styrofoam, the texture of a marshmallow, and the pliability of regular clay. I love the way this stuff feels and would love to find an excuse to incorporate it in other sculptures in the future. Now, as you just saw there, I created the shape of the balloon in aluminum foil and then covered it with my Sculpey Ultralight and I'm just shaping it out on the top of my pin tool. I also added some cornstarch to my fingertip to help me smooth it. To bake it, I actually kept it on my pin tool and stuck it in an oven-proof coffee mug to prop it up so that it wasn't laying on its side. And then once it's baked, I'm just adding some bacon bond and attaching it to the wire. Finishing off the end here. And that's looking pretty good. Then out of the oven, once he's completely cooled down, it's time for paint. I will be using Folk Art Matte Acrylics, and for his head, I'm using the color Boulder. Then after a couple coats of Boulder, I'm going to start highlighting using the color Dove Gray. 
and I'm just stippling that on to all of the raised areas of his head, like so. Then to brighten the dove gray color to create additional highlights, I'm just adding some titanium white. Then to darken the recessed areas of his face, I tinted my bolder color with some pure black. And here I'm going into the eye sockets, and then darkening the wrinkles and smaller details with a fine paintbrush. For these details, I watered the paint down just a little bit so that it goes into all of the nooks and crannies, and then I just wiped the excess off. Then to further heighten the details on this guy, I am just adding a couple spots here and there on his face and the back of his head, refining all the details, and now it's time to start the clown makeup. I wanted to go with a very simple design, I didn't want to overdo it, so all I do is just create these nice little crooked lines above his eyes and then a shorter line underneath them. And I love how this looks, I am so happy with how this clown makeup turned out on him. And then of course the other side wasn't as easy as the first side, so I just touched it up there. Now I'm painting his eyes, I believe this color is called Taffy. Then once those are done, I am going to add the pupils with a ball stylus instead of a paintbrush. Like that. And I made them looking two different directions, and I made one bigger than the other. Now for his nose, I'm taking some alizarin red, mixing that with some pure black and dove gray to get this color right here, this sort of desaturated red color. Then for his teeth, I'm going in with some taffy. Then for his lips, we're going to use some imperial red. Now I'm just adding some vertical lines to his lips with some um, imperial red that I tinted with a little bit of pure black. Now for his hair, for the base coat I'm using some hot saffron and butter mint mixed together to create this color here. I was really debating between painting his hair purple or orange. I wanted to do purple, but then I thought the orange would be a really nice contrast against the gray of his skin, so I went with that and I ain't mad. He's getting there. All right, now to tint the hair a little bit and really bring out the detail, I am using some imperial red that I tinted with black and then watered down, and I'm just going over the entire surface like so and then wiping off the excess with a paper towel. Once that's completely dry, I am just dry brushing a very, very light coat of taffy over the surface. Now it's time to paint his clothes. I will be mixing mauve dust and taffy together to create this nice, dull, sort of dirty looking white. <laughs> Figuring out how to paint this guy took me a second because there are so many ways you can make clown clothes. Ultimately though, I decided on this sort of alternating color palette and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now for the remaining areas of his clothes, I will be using pure magenta, and that's way too light. Gotta darken it a little bit. Much better. I want this to look like faded black. Now we're just going in with that dark pure magenta. This process here probably took me an entire hour just to paint all these areas. Like I said earlier, I really wish I would have used colored clay for the ruffles. But, whatever, you know, it just took a little longer in the end, but next time if I ever make ruffles, I'm using colored clay. Alright, now while I'm finishing up that base coat of pure magenta here, I just want to thank all of you for 100,000 subscribers. We hit 100,000 subscribers, I can't believe it. I never thought this would happen, let alone have it happen so fast. If you look back, January of this year, 
uh, January 3rd, I hit a little over 4,000 subscribers. So this is seriously mind blowing and it is because of all of you. Thank you so much for watching and being here. And the reason I'm saying this in the voiceover and not the intro or the outro is because I recorded those before I hit 100K. So I just wanna take a second here to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. This seriously is amazing. Next week's video is going to be really cool i we're definitely going to celebrate i have a couple things going on in it so stay tuned for that and thank you so so much again now let's paint some stripes <laughs> i really like how these last couple details finish him off Now to finish off the dark parts of the fabric, I'm adding a little skull pattern. I really like how these contrast the stripes. Then to finish off the skulls, I'm just going in and adding some eyes to each one. And now they don't look like little mushrooms. <laughs> and the last thing to paint is the balloon. I am going in with some alizarin red. And then for the final steps, I am glazing the balloon in some satin varnish, like so. And then the eyes and lips with some glossy varnish. And he's done! Pretzel the Clown is complete! Let me know what you think in the comments! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe! That's a wrap. I hope you like Pretzel, because I know he likes you. Thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Ace of Clay. Thank you again for all of your clown artwork. It's seriously amazing. You are so talented. Now let's go see it all.